Start game now. You know what's weird? When a bubblegum factory accidentally packages half of a gumball. How strange is that? You know what else is weird? Maniac Mansion for your Nintendo Entertainment System. Featuring a white base for the box art, which kind of makes it stick out. And a very interesting illustration that has plenty of character. You can kind of get a little taste of the game just by looking at this cover. Yep, we're looking at a tongue-in-cheek, kind of weird, bizarre game here. Look at the back. And it's still weird and bizarre because why is there a chainsaw in the kick in the kitchen and a nuclear reactor in the basement? Yep, this is going to be quite the crazy game. But is it any good? I don't know. Let's go ahead and put this in my Nintendo Entertainment System and find out if Maniac Mansion is a Maniac good time or not. Let's go to the game. Published by Jellico in 1990 and developed by Lucasfilm Games based on the 1987 computer games, Maniac Mansion has you starring as Dave, whose girlfriend Sandy has been kidnapped by the Edison family. Now it's up to you to enter the Edison Mansion, which was based on the mansion on Skywalker Ranch, where several of these people worked who worked for Lucasfilms. So basically it was based on George Lucas's house, in a way. Which kind of makes sense because this is a crazy place to explore and I'm sure that place would be crazy to explore as well. I mean, what do you expect from the guy who came up with Yoda, Jabba the Hutt, and Jar Jar Binks? There must be some crazy stuff going on wherever he lives. You can also select two friends to go with you on your adventure. And they vary from various styles. So you have punk rockers to nerds to surfer dudes. It's up to you who you're going to take along with you. This is a point and click adventure game where brains are going to be better than quick button pushes even though sometimes there are timed events going on in this game. Your job is basically to explore the house, click in on various aspects, trying to find out what you can interact with using basic commands such as open, close, use, and give, and so on and so forth. You could do this by just pointing and clicking as you would expect as well as using the select button to run through various often used commands as well. This game is a very graphically impressive game, at least in my opinion. It may not be the most beautiful game, but it's very, very interesting to look at. There's really nothing quite like it on the Nintendo Entertainment System, and I really dig the style. The music is catchy as well. Every character that you use has their own theme. So basically, when you switch characters, the music changes. Now, if the theme ever gets boring to you or you can't stand it anymore, you can use the CD player function on your command screen to turn off the music and just listen to the sound effects. The sound effects are okay, they do their purpose, nothing great there, but I did like the music overall. Family friendly wise, I would say that this is kind of a PG-13 style game due to dark humor and some blood splatters that appear to be on some of the walls here and there. Pretty much Nintendo sanitized a lot of this game when it came through, getting rid of some stuff that would probably still be considered PG-13 even today, so it's a little bit cleaner than the PC version. However, we must talk about the hamster. There is evidently a way to take the hamster and have him interact in the microwave in a disgusting fashion. Yeah, this is something that is not easily obtained, you have to know how to pull it off, but it can be done in just about every copy of the game. Now there was a rumor that Nintendo ordered Lucasfilms and Jalico to do a reprint of the game where it took out this trick when they discovered that it was in there because of course Nintendo wasn't happy to find it. But rumor also has it that they never reprinted the game after the initial run. So basically if you find a copy of the game the trick is most likely in there. I haven't heard of any copies that don't have it. Now I'm not going to show it because I want to keep my family friendly status. But if you're a sicko who wants to see a furball turn into a group of red pixels, well, I'm sure you can figure out a way to do that. On eBay, the game does command a little bit of a pricier price than your average NES game. It goes for about $15 to $20 loose, and that includes shipping, and complete copies typically go from $40 to $50. So overall, would I recommend this game? Well, I would to a point-and-click fan. Now, I will tell you this, I was really excited to play this game at first. I haven't played the Nintendo version in years, and at that time it was only briefly, so I've never played it all the way through. 
and when I started playing it at first I was put off a little bit by the controls because this game could have really used a mouse. And yeah, I know the Nintendo Entertainment System didn't have a mouse, but it would have been very helpful. The, the cursor can move kind of slow and exploring can be a little tedious at times just due to the sluggish control of having to point and click all over the place. But overall, as I played it, I just I just found myself growing more towards this game. It's a game that grows on you kind of like a bad wart on your foot. And it's kind of funny and humorous and it has lots of interesting dialogue. I won't include any spoilers here, but when you have characters that include people that look like they were made from Frankenstein's family, to talking tentacles, to a meteor, you know you're in for a good time. This is for people who kind of have a dry sense of humor. So if you're not one of those people, this kind of game doesn't appeal to you already, it's probably not going to. But if you enjoy clever, witty writing, then this might be right up your alley. So where am I going to rank it? Well, it's not better than Super Mario Bros. 3, but I will say this, it does have a little bit more longevity than you think because there are multiple endings, both good and bad. And you might need a game guide to get through this game. I know I've had to look at it a couple times to get forward. It, there is some puzzles that will seem very, very cerebral and very understandable, and others that you'll just be like, wow, that's just plain crazy. So there is some replayability, but then again, once you get through the few endings, you may not find yourself going back to it too often, maybe once in a blue moon, but I am going to put it right at the number two spot, just under Super Mario Bros. 3. The game would go on to spawn a sequel called Day of the Tentacle on the computers, and it also had a short-lived TV show. Well, actually, maybe not totally short-lived, lasted for about three years or so, but it was pretty much disconnected from the game just about it. Basically they used some of the characters name but then they changed the story quite a bit and it was a lot more family friendly than this game was. Also if you look closely you might even see an X-Wing hanging up in one of the bedrooms. Hey I am a member of the Retro Junkies Network as are Two Dudes in a Nest. That's a podcast you can find on iTunes, on Facebook and Twitter as well as MySpace. I'm not kidding I wish I was. They cover all sorts of Nintendo games including this one so be sure to check them out as well. Hey guys, thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and until next time, I look forward to seeing you right here on the Nosewear Gamer. Take care, everybody.